by Governor Evers should make electric vehicle owners pretty happy. That legislation paves the way for nearly $80 million in federal money to be used to build electric vehicle supercharging stations throughout Wisconsin along interstates and highways. Federal guidelines say those stations need to be available every 50 miles along designated corridors. And we are joined now by the Secretary of the Wisconsin Department of Transportation, Craig Thompson. So, Secretary, let me ask you this. As of mid-January, so just a few months ago, 28 states plus Puerto Rico had already begun awarding contracts to build chargers or have accepted some bids to do so. I believe two states have opened charging stations under the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Formula Program. That's a mouthful. So my question is, how ready to go is Wisconsin? How close are you to awarding contracts to get this started? Well, I, I think we're very close. As you mentioned, there's a couple states that are a little bit ahead of us. Uh, part of the upside of that is we've been able to learn a little bit from some other states that have moved forward. Uh, we have had to wait for some of this legislation to get passed to fully go forward, but we weren't sitting around waiting for that legislation to pass. We already went out for our request for proposals uh, beginning back in January, and that window actually closes uh, coming up here on April 1st. And then we look to start awarding uh, those grants uh, later this summer and looking at construction this fall. Okay, so that, that takes us to the timeline question, right? So you made the statement last week when the bill passed, electric vehicle drivers in Wisconsin will soon be able to travel about 85% of our state highway system and never be more than 25 miles away from a charger. So first, let's, let's tackle the soon. How soon is soon? Well, like I said, we're looking at starting the construction this fall. We'll be awarding uh, later this summer. And you know, some of that's gonna depend on there's availability of supplies. We're talking with other states. Uh, that can affect timelines a little bit, but we're going to be as aggressive as we can starting later this fall to start seeing those chargers get in the ground and, and, and move across the state. All right, I think the plan originally, and maybe it's altered a little bit, was 65 high-speed charging stations uh, around the state. Curious, though, what it looks like in the northern half of the state, where you start running out of a lot of the highway system. What's that going to look like for folks up here? Sure, that's a great question, and you know, each state was able to uh, propose to the Federal Highway Administration what they would want to designate as their, high, as their alternative fuel corridors. And uh, once you got those approved, you had to show that every 50 miles, uh, you'd have one of these fast chargers no more than one mile off of an exit. But some states chose to just do a single corridor, some um, portions of their interstate system. We tried to be as aggressive as we could in Wisconsin. So our alternative fuel corridors that we had approved are, is the entire interstate system, but then in the northern part of the state, it's Highway 2 going across, it's Highway 8 going across, it's Highway 29 going across. Okay. And then if you look at north south and northeast part of the state, it's 141, it's 51 in the in the cent north central part of the state, and it's 53 in the northwest. So you can go on our website, it has uh, an interactive map of that. And like you said, it's about 65 locations, but it will be every 50 miles along those corridors, including all the interstates, no more than one mile off of an exit. So this agreement, this this plan is actually going to bring some private businesses in, into play here. So have you already begun contracting with those uh, businesses, whether they be convenience stores, gas stations, et cetera, to have these charging stations? Yeah, that's the process that I was referring to before that we're in right now. Beginning in January, we went out for our request for proposals. Uh, the deadline is going to be April 1st. And we really are looking largely at, uh, as you said, gas stations, convenience stores, big box stores. Uh, we did a lot of reaching out to local governments, to these uh, institutions, to others. Uh, before we went out to request for proposal, we did a lot of learning from other states, uh, what they've seen. And so we've had a lot of interest. Uh, the, the deadline will be April 1st, and we'll start awarding to these different groups uh, this summer. All right. I think we all know there's one big convenience uh, chain out there that is pretty well represented around the state. So I'll be curious to find out if any of these charging stations go to a place that starts with a K and also has a T in it. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, Mr. Thompson, a 75 percent increases in registration fees. We've seen this passed uh, in the budget for electric vehicles. That was meant to make up for the losses of those drivers with the gas tax, right? There will be a three cent charge on kilowatt hour charging. Uh, for these electric vehicles. So any chance or any discussions that that high registration fee hike might come back down because three, per, three cents on electric kilowatts, three cents on the gas tax, roughly, that might be a wash. Any chance those registration fees will come down? 
Sure. Well, again, I think that's going to be a conversation that really is with our policymakers that, that make those decisions. Um, as you said, I think the rationale for increasing uh, the registration on electric vehicles was the fact that we 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 tend to try to uh, fund Transportation Wisconsin through a user fee mm -hmm. system that has traditionally been through the gas tax. So for electric vehicles that are not paying that gas tax, uh, there was discussion about trying to uh, make sure that that user fee would apply to electric vehicles as well. Now, as you said, in this most recent, recent legislation, uh, there's also a three cent uh, uh, charge on the kilowatt per hour um, fueling or, or charging rather uh, with the EV. So I imagine this will all be part of the conversation about how we continue to fund our transportation system, what user fees look like in the future as we have more diversity of, of gas powered and electric vehicles on our roads. All right, Secretary Thompson, we thank you so much for the time. Good luck with the project. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you uh, spotlighting this issue.